who joined me on an absolutely stunning winter's day down at Hardwick and Smith's Lake on the Linear Fisheries Complex. And if you were to choose carp fishing conditions during the winter, this would be it. We've got a southerly wind blowing, which is meant to just change to a southwesterly later on today. I've got 36 hours ahead of me and it's 14 degrees at the moment, 14 degrees in the middle of February. This is prime carp fishing weather and overnight it's only meant to drop down to about 9 or 10 tonight and remain pretty constant tomorrow as well around the 12 to 13 degree mark so you know these are the conditions to be out on a winter session although over the last couple of days we have had a lot of rain and some of the lakes across the complex are closed at the moment due to the flooding and the water level on this one's a good six to ten inches up than what it normally is so that's the only thing we've got really going against us but i'm still confident the sun's out a nice breeze on the water it's looking good for it all three rods are already out and fishing it took me a good hour hour and a half with the marker rod this morning to try and find a couple of areas that i was happy to put a bit of bait on and once i was happy got the spod rod out put six, six spawns on each spot and then i got the rods out on top and stay tuned during this vlog because the winner of the giveaway from the last Jack's vlog is going to be announced and also one lucky viewer is going to have themselves a chance to win a set of our B-series bankware which we'll go through in detail a little bit later in the vlog. But that right hand rod I've got out on a solid bag just on top of a nice bar out there that's about 12 wraps, 12 and a half wraps out. I've just got that on top of a bar which has got a nice bit of gravel on top, it just screams cut. So I had to put a, a rig and a bit of bait out there. I've put six bombs over the top and that solid bag, I've got a single grain of fake corn, slow sinking fake corn. Hopefully that one does the bite. I'm, I'm confident in that. And then that middle rod, I've got out at 23 wraps. So where I've got the bar on the right hand rod, on the upper side of it, on the back of that, there's uh, goes down to about 20 foot. And then it comes up again about another 10 wraps that's where I've got the, the middle rod, 23 wraps out. So, and again, it's nice and firm out there. I found a little bit of gravel, but not as much. A nice firm spot though, and I've put some bait over the top of that as accurately as I could in this wind. Um, six or seven spawns out the top, over the top of that. And then that left hand rod, I've got out on a zig. I've got it out on a nine foot zig at the moment. Just to the left of the middle rods where I've been putting the bait. So it's in that sort of zone. So I know it's, 14 foot out there and I've got a nine foot zig, bit of black foam. I'm feeling quite com confident, it feels good for a bite. I've just spoken to the bailiff and he reckons a few fish came out last weekend, um, but as a whole the complex is quite quiet at the moment. We've had a lot of rain over the last couple of days and the water level's gone up, but conditions are looking good. It's been a good two hours now since all three rods went out in the water and it's been pretty quiet to say the least, especially considering the lake is so busy. I haven't seen any fish activity and I haven't seen anyone catch so far. The far bank, there's not a swim available and the same goes for my, the left hand side of me. So it's very, very busy. I do expect the fish activity to change though by the time I leave tomorrow. I do expect a few fish to have been caught because the conditions are so good a prime for a few fish to be caught especially overnight but my plan moving forward the left hand rod like i say is on a nine foot zig at the moment and i'm in the next hour probably going to drop that down to seven and then give that a couple of hours and then look at dropping that down to probably around the five foot mark if nothing happens on that rod overnight i'm definitely going to be putting it on the deck well that's sort of my plan for the rest of the day going into the night Hopefully the fish turn up and we manage to catch a few, but while it's quiet, just want to run through what I've been up to over the last month or so this winter in terms of my carp fishing. And my first trip saw me head to Cokin Farm and I ended up on Clover Lake. Well, they're the three rigs that are going to be going out. Three German rigs. I've got two there on the CC Moore Life System wafters. And then I've got one on a NS1 dumbbell wafter. And both of those baits have caught me fish from this lake in the past. So I've got utmost confidence that they'll do the same if there's some fish in the area. And then I'll just be attaching a small PVA mesh bag of 10 mil Life System. And I'm going to be scattering over some 15 mils over the top with the catapult. So let's get them out in the lake. So what I've done is cast the bare lead over across to this side of the lake 
we can find the lead. There it is. The idea being we clip the, the baited rig with the PVA mesh bag on this side and all we need to do is just drop it in tight to the margin. That way I can ensure I'm right tight in to where I want to be. Because I've had it on this lake before where I've cast two foot off where I want to actually be. And as a result, I haven't had a, t a bite from it. So I've got to get this. Ideally, you'd want someone else on the other side, but just tightening up the line because unfortunately I haven't got that luxury. That went down perfectly. Right, let's get a bit of bait out. Put a few just up the margin. Beautiful. And I'm down here at Cokin Farm Fisheries in Dorset and I'm on Clover Lake today. It's a lake that's been doing a few bites over the past couple of days since we've had this mild weather. So there's a good chance of a bite today and I'm in a swim that I know very, very well. It's a corner swim and this sort of half of the lake is where the fish have been holding up. There's a chap just up to my left and then another one just round the corner as well. So there's a bit of pressure down here, but this is where the fish are held up. So hopefully we can get ourselves into some action. Well, a good little tip when you fish in a venue like this, it's got a high stock of fish, is fire single boilies over the top of your spot. What you'll find is this acts as a bit of an attractor, a little bit of noise in the swim, just to bring some fish in that's maybe in the area, just to sort of bring them into the area to investigate. And what I found, especially on venues like this, it's got a high stock of fish, is that often 10, 15 minutes after doing this, usually find there's a good chance of a bite. And that's the bait that I'm going to be getting over the top. A mixture of CC Moore Lye System, 12 millers and 15 millers in there that I've had soaked in tap water and some CC Moore Live System bait booster as well for the best part of five or six months. Well, here's a setup for today's session. I've got the crosscast traditional rods there, 10 foot, three pound models. And I've got them paired up with the Emblem 35 SCW QD. And together that makes the perfect little combination for these sort of waters, you know, where you're only flicking sort of, I think the max I've cast so far today is 14 wraps. So, you know, 60 yards, perfect for this sort of fishing where you, you, you know, and they got a lovely action for fish playing so you can really enjoy the fight because you don't need the extra power for the casting on these types of venues. And I'll just run through what I've actually done with my approach today. So on the left hand rod, I've gone tight out towards that island just over there on the tip. The center rod, which is the one on the yellow NS1 wafter, I'm actually just gonna roam about in sort of mid water. I've got this whole corner down here to my right to explore. And on the right hand rod, I've actually got that really tight to that far margin over there. And you actually see some footage what I've actually done is I cast a bare lead over to the far margin. I've walked around with my rig and some bait. I've clipped on the rig over there and I've just lowered that into exactly on the spot of where I want to be fishing. And it's, that's, the, that's the rod I'm most confident in because I know the fish do like to patrol up and down that margin. So I've got to crack on with some product photography now, but hopefully one of those rods will rattle off in the meantime. just gone past midday I was starting to get a bit worried that nothing was going to happen and then the middle rod has burst into life this is the one tight against the margin and it feels like it's snagged up in something at the minute I don't know whether it's taken me around some reeds
Well, there's what's left of it. The fish has taken me through some snags on the take. I reckon it's dumped the hook into some branches that are over there. I've managed to go round in sort of retrieve it. I've crawled around the margin really, going under the trees and up and over. And when I've got round there, it's just let go and snapped me clean off. So I reckon it's dumped me in some pretty savage snags around there. So it's a good sign that there's fish feeding over there, but now it's sort of given me a bit of dilemma whether I put the bait back over there, knowing that the snags there come off the margin or go further along the margin. I'm gonna have to have a think. Well, to say I'm gutted would be a bit of an understatement, really. My first sign of fish activity in the swim on that right-hand margin, I've put a bait right over on top of it, and within 30 minutes, it's rattled off. But unfortunately, I was in contact with the fish for five to 10 seconds, and it's buried me deep into a snag. There must be some bulrushes or, or some branches that have fallen off into the water, and it's buried me deep into that. I managed to creep round to the margin just to get some elevation over the top of it and after giving it a bit of a pull it's uh, snapped clean off so yeah something dangerous pretty dangerous over there in, in the water so it gave me a bit of a rethink really I um, I know I want to be in that area with the bait so I've come three or four yards up to the left and I'm fishing with a tight clutch tight clutch locked up and if anything takes it I'll be on the rod straight away and give it a bit of guidance away from whatever snag that is over there but I'm hopeful we've got about an hour and a half before it gets dark. The rods are in position. I'm going to be roaming this left hand rod around the swim and seeing if I could pick up a fish that way and the upper two rods there over there over in that margin um, over a bit of bait. So fingers crossed we can go away with a fish. safe to say that that trip left a bit of a bitter taste. Losing that fish in the slat snag, my only bite of the trip was absolutely gutting, but it wasn't long before I was back out on the bike again. That's all three rods out now, and to say that I was eager to get those rods out fishing was an understatement. As soon as I turned up here with the van, there was a few signs that fish are in the area, some bubbles coming up. I just wanted to get those rods out for the first thing that I did. And all three rods are all on the German rigs. White, two of them on the white NS1 dumbbell wafter. My right hand rod is on the ever faithful for me, the live system wafter. And again, I put a PVA mesh bag onto all three of them. I've scattered a bit of bait over the right hand rod into in towards the, um, the channel area there and then I've scattered some bait on my left hand rod as well but that middle rod I was planning on casting that over to the island but as soon as I stood up to cast the rod I spotted a few bubbles in close it sort of between me and the island so I've just flicked it in sort of midway out towards that island and going to give that a good hour see if anything develops but early signs are good I'm at Islands Fishery today in Mere and I'm on swim 12, which is also known as Jack's Corner, funnily enough. So hopefully that's a bit of a lucky, lucky charm for, for today's session, but early signs are looking good. Well, here comes the rain that wasn't forecast. We weren't supposed to have any rain today. All of the rain was supposed to have happened last night and we had a lot of rain last night, absolutely bucketed down. And as a result, the water's a real sort of chocolatey, muddy color. But on the fish front, early signs are pretty good. I've seen a few bubbles here and there. So hopefully there's a few fish in the area. Well, I think I'm gonna put on the back leads. I think on little, small, intimate venues like this, this could be a real game changer. I want the line pinned to the deck so fish aren't coming into contact when they're swimming through the channels between the islands. All right, let's get them on before it absolutely tips down. Ooh. 
well, after all that rain, I'm glad that I packed the shelter. I wasn't going to, like I said, the forecast was meant to be dry all day, just cloudy and overcast with no chance of rain. But the last minute I thought, well, I'll just put, put one into the van and uh, if I don't need it, then I won't use it. But thankfully I did. And just for you guys wondering, this is our new mission brolly. The perfect shelter for something like, like I'm doing today, just a day session or if you want to do an overnighter as well, absolutely perfect for that. And as you can see, you've got two storm poles, one for each side. And there's also a detachable ground sheet, but on a session like today, where I'm just fishing the day, I take, or try to minimize as much weight as I carry. So I usually take the ground sheet out and just take this. Um, it just comes with heavy duty ground pegs as well to ensure it stays where it is in place in all manner of conditions. But yeah, just the perfect little shelter for a session like this. I'm gonna try putting a bit of pellet into the PVA mesh bag as opposed to the 10 mil live system. Just a bit of a change. Coming up to about midday now, so nothing's happened as of yet. I'm still seeing the odd set of bubbles come up. But I feel like there is a chance of a bite here. Just need to try and find what's going to make that happen. Well, I'm going to make a little tactical change here on this left hand rod that I've had out towards that spit over there. I'm going to take the, the white boilie off. The NS1 wafter. I'm going to put on a Pacific Tuna 15mm wafter. Just try something with a bit of a different flavour. In that small location. Bang. Finally, the left hand rod, which I've just recast with a Pacific tuna boilie, that little pellet bag has ripped off. And it's chitin. It has, by the looks of it, picked up my right hand rod, which is a bit of a nightmare when using back leads. But that little change just to a different, different color, different flavor, using the pellets instead of the live system has resulted in a bite. It's gonna be a bit tricky getting this one in, especially as it's caught my upper line. I have a feeling it's gonna wipe out all three of the rods. Well, the other two rods anyway. But yeah, this cross cast traditional, I absolutely love this rod. It's got a lovely action. When you're playing fish right under the rod tip, absorbs all of those lunges, but yet still got plenty of the power just to guide it away from any snags. Just a pleasure to use. Putting up a great scrap. <laughs> Look at that mess coming in. Come on. Yes. Lovely jubby, that's, a nice, that's not a bad fish, that. Right. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unhook the fish straight away and then sort out some of this mess. Well, what about that for a carp? First carp of 2024 for me, and after losing that fish at Coquin Farm, I've been eager to get out and right that wrong, and what a fish to do so. Incredible scale pattern on it. 22 and a half pounds, a solid fight in mirror carp. Right, let's uh, show you the other side, and then we'll get it back. Well, there we go. There's one thing I should mention, this fish is still absolutely freezing, so there's still temperature, water temperature's really cold out there still. Leeches on the bottom flanks of it, but this is what winter fishing is all about. Hey, get in, let's get it back. And there she goes. 
get in. Oh, I think I've got a bite on the right hand rod. It's either a bite or a liner. No, I think it is a bite. Yeah, it is a bite. It's kited as well. Oh, the smallest carp in the world. <laughs> Fish of about a pound, maybe. So at Islands Fishery, they do have a rule where any fish under six pounds has to go in that keep net over there. So I'm gonna have to unhook him and slip him into that keep net. And then I'll let a bailiff know when I, they come round. If not, I'll message the group. After a slow start to the day, it actually proved to be a really successful day session. Landing that 22 and a half pound mirror about shortly after two o'clock and then followed up about half an hour later with a little small one of about a pound, which has gone straight into the keep net for the bailiff to come in, retrieve later on and move over to the stock ponds. But yeah, I've probably got about 30 minutes of light left. And to be honest, I'm not feeling that confident now. The fish activity has slowed down. I'm not seeing those bubbles. There was a few fish crashing earlier about the time I got that bite and it, it felt like something was going to happen. But now it's just gone flat and it's gone pretty dead, to be honest. I'm not hopeful that we're going to get any more action. So I'm going to slowly pack down and hopefully be out on the bank again soon. And that island's trip concludes the carp fishing that I've been doing so far this winter. As you can tell, I haven't been out a lot so far. It's been a, a very busy few months on all fronts, work and family life as well. But hopefully, swinging back to this session, we can bag ourselves a couple of carp when they turn up. That's all three rods recast and out on the spots. The left hand rod, I've still got it on a zig, but I've dropped it a couple of foot. So that's around six, seven foot now in depth. I'm gonna give that an hour, and then I'm gonna be changing over to a bottom rig on it as well, and getting that out on the spot over some bait. But we are due a lot of rain now. From now, anytime now, until three o'clock in the morning, torrential rain. So this will probably be the last update before the evening. It is due to get dark in the next sort of hour as well. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get a fish through the night. Well, I've just taken off the six, seven foot zig. I've just changed it over to my old faithful German rig, CC Moore Life System wafter on a helicopter system. Hopefully that's going to do us a bite tonight. So I was going to pull it on the short spot on the right hand side of the swim and have two rods fish in that short spot. But I'm actually decided I'm going to put this one long as well on the 23 wrap spot. I've got one already out there on exactly the same, just with double fake corn. I just feel that if there was any fish holding up, it's most likely going to be out towards that center of the, the lake. So Gonna get that out, wrap it up, and get it out. The rain's held off so far, and I've just had my first occurrence on the right-hand rod. I've just had a liner, which has actually made me have a bit of a rethink, really. Instead of having the two rods out long, I've actually brought one in, and I've put that over on the right-hand spot as well, just because it's that's the only fish activity I've got to go off of from the whole trip so far. I haven't seen anyone catch. And that is the first bit of activity I've seen, that right hand liner. So it suggests that the fish are moving in quite close. So it's for me, that's gonna be my best chance of a bite. Those two middle rod and the right hand rod on that close spot. Hopefully we get one through the night.
Good morning, and what a beautiful morning it is. The sun's out shining, it's nice and mild, perfect for some carp fishing. But unfortunately, the night didn't quite go to plan. Just on dark, the left hand rod pulled up tight, and uh, as soon as I got down to the rod and sort of wound down into it, it was, it was obvious it was snagged up on something, it was grating. Um, I gave it some gentle pressure and just hoped that the fish could pull itself free and you know just one of those moments where you know that it's unlikely that you're going to land the fish and the hook pulled. Um, thankfully that there's no fish out there tethered and we've got the rig back so fresh bait wrapped back up put it straight back out on the spot and I was confident going into the night I thought especially this right in this middle rod I thought they were going to go like on that gravel bar and about 11 o'clock in the pouring rain my right hand rod started to pull up tight it got wiped out by a trailer got down to the rod it was sort of doing a real weird sort of on the bobbin i started to pull started to wind down into it just in case it was a fish and as i started reeling it just completely there was nothing there it was um I, it wasn't a liner i could tell it wasn't a liner because the bobbin was pulling up tight it was definitely something attached something going on whether a lead or or whatever's just wiped it out from a fish going over the spot. But yeah, not the best way to start the night, but I was going in confident. I've, I've got the rod back out, even though it's pouring in the rain, rod back out, a few more spawns of bait over the top, just in case. And yeah, woke up this morning. I've saw a few fish crashing, so I'm, I'm feeling a bit, conf bit more confident than I was at 11 o'clock last night after having to recast that rod. Yeah, there's a few fish in the area this morning and with this sun as it is i think the plan of attack is definitely to experiment with some zigs as we go throughout the day about eight hours of fishing left so hopefully we can get one on the bank for those of you wondering which particular rods and reels i've been using on today's session i've got with me our brand new bazier x45x cart rods in the 13 foot three and three quarter pound test curve model and these are absolutely incredible they're so light they utilize the best carbon that we have in our cart fishing rods x45x technology and then the first cart rods to feature the alps air pad reel seat which is real skeletal design really minimalistic they got an incredibly light pickup these rods and paired up with the rods i've got the tournament bazier 45 scw qd reels and they are absolutely stunning well, in the last episode of Jack's Vlog, we ran a giveaway for one lucky viewer to win a Black Widow compact rucksack and a Black Widow cool bag. And I'm pleased to say that, Tony Martin, your comment was selected as being the winner. So all you need to do is to send us a message on the Diowa Carp Instagram page or my personal Instagram account, Jack Wheeler Fishing, and we'll make sure that we'll get those two items sent over to you. Well, I did say earlier in the video that one lucky viewer would have the chance to win a set of our B-Series Bankware and exactly what you'd win is what I'm using here today. Obviously, you'd get a new set and what that consists of is one free rod front buzz bar, free rod rear buzz bar and two of our B-Series bank sticks. It's important to mention to enter the giveaway, you do have to be over 18 years of age and reside in the UK or Northern Ireland. And how do you enter? All you need to do is let us know in the comments below on the YouTube video is what is your favourite part of carp fishing? Now that could be as simple as just getting out the house or is as much detail as you want to give. And we will select our favourite comment to win the set of B-Series Bankware. Just had a drop back on the left hand rod the one i've just put out on a 10 foot zig and it's managed to pick up both of my upper lines but we're finally attached into a fish that 10 foot zig doing the business i actually thought that the chance had gone really i thought that bite during the night was going to be my one and only opportunity of a fish it has looked good today but Finally, one of the rods has burst into life. I'm just going to let the bail arm off on the other two rods because it's definitely picked up those two rods. I'll sort that out when we've got this fish, hopefully, safely in the net. 
These rods are just absolutely incredible for playing fish. Got a lovely action throughout. Plenty of backbone. Definitely picked up those upper two lines, that's for sure. Gonna have one hell of a tangle to deal with at the end. Looks like the line's wrapped all around the fish as well, which isn't ideal for landing it. Come on. Yes, get in. Get in. Fish in the net. Well, after that opportunity missed last night, I thought that was gonna be it for the session. I woke up this morning, pretty gutted that the rods hadn't gone during the night, but what about that? 23 pound, just over the 23 pound mark. And that come on that 10 foot zig that I'd knocked out just by that 23 wrap spot. I knew those shows looked ziggy and it's paid off. I'm definitely gonna put two zigs back out now. Get in. And there's the other side. A real short fish, real dumpy, real fat, got a huge belly on it, just a real short frame. Definitely could go bigger if it had a bigger frame. Let's get it back and hopefully we can get enough one before we have to go. Well, I can honestly say that I thought the opportunity last, that I had last night was going to be the only chance I was going to have today. Um, until that left hand rod burst into life from that 10 foot zig. I sort of lost all hope, to be honest with that, because I saw the shows earlier, a good two to three hours ago, and it looked like it screamed zigs, but then it's sort of gone quiet. And then that rod just burst into life. So I just had a savage drop back, and I went down, picked it up, and we were into that fish. So. I'm absolutely over the moon to get one. I, I, would, I would have hated to have left to, today not having a fish on the bank, but yeah, absolutely buzzing now. So I've already got one rod back out on an eight foot zig, which I had ready to go after that landing that fish. A like 10 foot zig that I've caught that fish on is a no-go. So I've got to quickly tie up a 10 foot zig, pop one of the other rods on it, and hopefully we might get enough one before we have to go. Well, that's the two rods out on the zigs. I'm not going to bother putting the third rod out over the bait because I've only got about an hour left. It's in an almighty tangle. I'm going to have to sort that one out. It's going to take a little while, so I'll do that while I'm at home. And yeah, I've only got about an hour left, so I'm going to slowly start to pack down the rest of the kit. Hopefully one of those rattles off in the meantime. I've got two zigs out, but I just want to show you effectively what I'm using out there today. So that one just there. Little bit of black foam, size six, hook. I've got a little bit of tubing just there at the end just to keep the zig nice and close to the hook. And then I've got a kicker. The ones I've been using, I've got the brown kickers on. But yeah, 10 foot is the one that's done the business. The rods are gonna be out for enough of 10 minutes and I'm gonna be bringing them in and packing down. It's been an enjoyable trip. Just the one fish, unfortunately lost that fish, but you know, you can't win them all. Thank you very much for watching and if you've enjoyed the video please like, subscribe to the Diver Carp YouTube channel and until the next time I'll catch you later.